Hello, everybody. This is Amanda Rose from Arts and Travel. And Mike, how are you doing today? I am so good. It's scary. I'm finally back in my basement after I think I told you my, our travails of having a pipe burst about six weeks ago. And I finally, last week, I finally got everything all squared away and back together. So those of you, I am Although I am an archer, I am not down in Montrose at the Archer Travel Service offices. You are seeing the picture of my new basement, newly that, refurbished. That looks really nice, Mike. I love it. That's like a fancy basement. <laughs> well, we had a we had the new floor put down, and then pretty much all the repair work I kind of did. And then that new desk, that desk is like a week old. And I had, I bought it at Home Depot and had to put it all together myself. So, but that's what you're looking at. So when you guys see me on the screen, there's where I'm sitting to, to do all this stuff. So having said that, let us get into today's lesson. But before we do that, Amanda, you want to tell them where they can find all this stuff? Yes. So today we're on lesson number two and you can find lesson number one on the Travel Cafe website trainings tab and then Mike Archer sales training. Click on that. You can uh, watch all of his previous trainings as well as download the manual and his contact information. So go ahead and check that out after this training today. All right, cool. So as always, if you have any questions, I can't see them, but Amanda can. So if you have any questions during the course of the training, just type them in chat. And if it's relevant to what we're talking about at the time, she'll jump in and with that question. Uh, and a lot of times we get questions at the very end. So having said that, you should be on, I want everybody to open up to page four on your manuals. If you have not printed your manuals out, you need to do that. Because on the test, a lot of this stuff comes from the video and a lot of it comes from the manual. And if you're not taking notes from the video, you're gonna miss a lot of these questions. Um, to get your certification. So we're on lesson two, we're on behavioral style. So remember, I keep telling you that sales is a relationship business. And two out of the seven lessons have to do with how you establish the relationship, how you maintain it, and how you maintain positive uh, interpersonal relationships during the course of your, of your selling. And the two things, that, the things that we're gonna work on this week and next week, are not just selling skills. These are actually life skills that you can put to use with your kids, your spouses, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers. This is something that you can use constantly. So on page two, what we're talking about, what we're gonna talk about today is behavioral styles. Everybody likes to operate in a certain format that they're comfortable with. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Next week, we're gonna get into how you can modify temporarily your behaviors to accommodate the people that you're working with and then how to avoid um, uh, what's called backup behavior, how to avoid um, highly tense, highly stressful situations so that you can maintain those interpersonal, those good interpersonal relationships. So today I want you to start on lesson four. And I want you, to, we're going to talk about behavioral styles, how people are comfortable um, within their bodies, within their minds of how they present themselves to the world. And each of us is, as you all well know, each of us is unique. God created everybody unique. There is nobody like me. There is nobody like you. And this gives us an opportunity to understand how people like to be treated. So, the things that come into play here, um, it sets us apart, is that that's called our style. We each have a unique style. And it's, our, it's a combination of our minds, intellects, abilities, and our wills. That forms our nature, the stuff that we're born with. Our surroundings form our morals, values, ideas, our ideals, our attitudes. That's the nurture part. So that's the nature nurture part of how we develop our personalities. All of this is manifested through our behavior, 
how we can, how we present ourselves to the world. Now, where this comes into play, that's what we're talking about today. And for those of you that also attend Jose's Wednesday training, this is the part of his of his training that goes to the meet and greet and get to know your client. So if you'll notice, Jose and I are trying to merge and, and so that you can get an idea because he's talking about selling travel. I'm talking about sales in general. This is how you can merge the two so that you can understand how, how it works inside of the travel industry. All right, using styles correctly, there's a couple of rules and those rules are all on page four. And I'm gonna go through these because it's very, very important. And a lot of these show up on the test. Style is based on behaviors we can observe and agree upon. So in other words, those of you that follow Doonesbury, you know that Roland Headley, when Reagan was in office, Roland Headley was always trying to climb into Ronald Reagan's brain to understand it. Well, that's kind of what we have to do here if we didn't have any other frame of reference. For you to get to know me, you have to climb inside my head. However, there are things that I show you where you can observe what's inside my head by my by things that I do outside of my body, all right? And it's based on two things, what people say and what people do, and that's it. There's nothing else here. This is not complicated. Um, it, it's based on what you see, what you see me doing, and how I approach you verbally and emotionally, all right? S this is key. Style is not, you are not judging people when you're trying to identify how they like to be treated. It's not judgmental. It's not trying to put a people in a box. There is no good. There is no bad. There just is. It's right for you. It's style is non-limiting. It doesn't put people in boxes. Now here's number four. Your style is perfect for you and it's not subject to change. And we're going to get into that um, on how that works. We all have different phases in our lives where sometimes we're more emotional, sometimes we're less, sometimes we're, we we're take charge, and sometimes we, leave, we, we sit back a little bit. And that's common to all of us. But there's a home-based style where we're all comfortable. And so that's um, number five is each style has its strengths, and we'll talk about that. But other styles could view those as a weakness. All right. So, and then number six, we all have a few behaviors, which are more typical of people who are in the other three quadrants. So this is a life skill. I told you this is a life skill as well as a sales skill. So please keep in mind that when you are doing this, it's what people say and what people do. It's objective. You can see what I'm doing. And actually at the end of this, I'm going to give you guys a chance to kind of figure out, well, actually, I tell you what my style is, but in, but you're going to see if my style is right for me um, kind of at the end. I've never done this before, so this will be, this will be fun. So styles is first and foremost objective. Your goal, and this is key, your goal is not to discover whether you like this person or whether this person likes you. Your goal is to find out what are the clues, verbal and nonverbal, that they are giving you to help you understand how they like to be treated. So what I want you to do now is I want you to go over to page um, seven. Look on page seven. Actually, this is the style chart we're going to use, but I, but I want you to look at page six. So there's a there's a there's a, a bunch of blank ones of these in the back because I want you to do these not only on yourself but I want you to do these on um, your kids, your spouses, your coworkers because it's a lot of fun. So here's how we're going to do this. This is the chart we're using, and column one and column two have to do with your emotions. All right. Column three and column four have to do with your assertiveness, your aggressiveness. This is where we establish your home-based style. So here's how this is going to work. So the first thing we're going to do is I want you to, to uh, on page six, there are 15 styles. There, are, I'm sorry, there are 15 phrases on column one and column two and another 15 on three and four. So I want you to imagine 
and this is kind of hard to do. I want you to imagine that you're at a party. It's at your house. You're in the kitchen preparing hors d'oeuvres and drinks and stuff. And right on the other side, out in the living room, some of your friends and neighbors and family members are, and professional cohorts are talking, and they're talking about you. So they are using these terms to describe you. Now, in your mind, what I want you to do is what words would they use to describe you more than 50% of the time? Now, what you're looking at here is, is my profile. All right, so am I cool or am I warm? Well, I perceive myself to be warm. Am I reserved or approachable? I consider myself reserved. Am I cautious or impulsive? Most of the time I'm cautious. It depends on, you know, on what I'm doing. When I was playing softball, I was really aggressive. And I was really, I would try to steal a base anytime, that, anytime I got on. So am I strict or am I permissive? For me, that's an easy one. I'm pretty strict. I'm an old school guy. So here's what I want you to do. I want you, and you'll notice these are all opposites. So you can only check one, one of the words on those lines. You can't check them both. All right, so it's where you are more than 50% of the time. And then I want you to add up your checks. And then at the bottom, I want you to subtract two from one to get a number. And if you get a negative number, like I did, that's okay. That's just where you're going to fall on the chart. So we're going to take about a minute, minute or, or two, and I want each one of you to, to fill this out. And then when you're all finished in the chat, give a thumbs up so um, Amanda knows that most of you are done and we can move on to the next phase. So go. So you just want them to do column one and two and then column one and then we're gonna and then we're gonna do the same thing with three and four. Okay. But you don't want them to do the bottom part yet, the total checks. You just want them to do Yeah, I do. I want yeah. So okay. when you're done with column one and column two, I want you to um I want you to to add the checks up in each column and then subtract two from one. And since we're doing this, let's just slide over. So we're going to do the exact same thing for columns three and four. This has to do with your assertiveness. And so you'll notice that the terms are different, but the process is exactly the same. When you're all finished, take the columns and then, and then subtract four from three. And, and, and then what number do you get? So, and it's pretty much like a this or that you only pick one, you only pick one from each side. Yeah. Like, for example, I have a, I, I checked a clear idea of needs rather than unclear. I always know what my needs are. I've never, I'm never uncertain. I'm never wishy-washy. Am I competitive or am I cooperative? Well, I'm both, but most of the time I'm competitive. So some of these are going to be, some of these are going to be close calls for you that, that where you, you're like competitive and cooperative. It depends on the situation that I'm in. If it's a if it's a sporting event, I'm a competitive as all get out. But if it's in a collaborative situation, like when I was in yearbooks and I was calling on schools, my whole mindset was cooperation. So a lot of it's going to depend on the situation. But for the most part, where are you more than 50 percent of the time? OK, so so finish up both of those. And then, um, as I said, give her a smiley face or a thumbs up and then we can move on. Yes, please let me know in chat once you're done. You can type done, smiley face, thumbs up, whatever you want to do, but let me know when you are done doing this on your PDF. And if you don't have the PDF already, um, I linked it in chat, but I can link it again as well for those of you who are just joining. Okay, Holly Hudson uh, gave us a smiley face, so she's done doing hers. Uh, Krista gave us a thumbs up. She's done doing hers. Perfect. And Angie said done. Uh, Karina gave us a thumbs up. She's done. 
Uh, Tris gave us a done with a happy face. Nice. <laughs> All right. Annette is done. Sabrina is done. Sandy is done. Wow. We've got a lot of people on today. Cool. Uh, if you're still uh, finishing that up, keep doing so. Um, but I think we have a good amount of people done. Tammy, Lauren, good. Uh, do you want to move on, Mike? Yep, we'll move on. The other ones can catch up. Okay, so what you're going to do now is you, you should have, this is what your chart should look like. So on the directions on the bottom, I want you to move over to page seven. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take your number. So in my case, I was minus two, minus two. So you're going to find the total from columns. Um, hold on, let me look at this. Find your number from one and two. So find your number on the vertical scale. So column one and two, I'm going to go down here to two minus two. And I am going to take a line and I'm going to draw a straight line from my minus two. I'm going to draw a straight line right across there. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing with my with the vertical one I'm going to find so I'm on minus two so now I'm going to go I'm going to go along this line the horizontal line and I'm going to go to actually that was a minus one so I'm going to go to minus one which is right here and I'm going to draw another line where those lines intersect is my home base style so I'm basically an amiable all right if you guys I tell you what's one that, that's going to be fun to do because you've had enough you've had enough time to to see both Ron and Reg, Ron Reggie and Jose on all the videos. Do do them on Ron Reggie and Jose and tell me what you come up with next week. I'd be or send me uh send me put it in chat down the road and tell me what you who you think they are. So I am a minus two minus one, which makes me I'm I'm on the assertive scale. I'm kind of in the middle. So depending on my situation, like for example, I want you to look at the arrows, the little arrows, like, come on baby, where's, like these arrows right here, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So where I am, this arrow points toward the driver. So while my home base is an amiable, I have a lot of characteristics on the driver. So I can migrate back and forth. Now, when I'm in a teaching mode like this, you'll notice I'm pretty much, I, I, we've got about a half hour, 35 minutes to get a lot of stuff done. And we've got a, a short time to get there. So I need to make sure that we get there, that you understand what's going on and everybody's comfortable. The higher up you go, so if you're if you're above a five up here, that means if you're an analytical, you also have some. So that is, you're not a very emotional person. Down here means you're a very emotional person. Over here, if you go beyond minus five, that means you're not very aggressive at all. And if you're beyond a, a plus five. You are, you've got a, so, so you, these will show you, these dotted lines will show you where your secondary characteristics happen to be. Now in the test, I ask you what style you are, and some of you are putting both characteristics down. I only want what your basic, what your home base is. Now, so remember, all this is, is so what we're trying to do is establish the relationship um, with yourself where your home base is so that you can understand what other people's home bases are. Now, the other thing to understand is, depending on your situation, you are not stuck. I'm not stuck here. There are some times that I am a, extremely aggressive, especially like I used to teach a girl's pitching clinic. So I was very much in control, uh, uh, fast pitch pitching clinic. So when I was very much in control and I had specific things I wanted to do and I, was, I would have maybe a couple of minutes with each girl and I would just rotate around for my session. So I would be very assertive in what I wanted them to do. But there are other times, especially in social situations, in social situations, 
I go to a minus six or a minus seven. I am, in some aspects, I'm pretty socially awkward. I, I do not enjoy parties. So in, in those instances, especially in big groups, I am not a big group guy. The bigger the group, the more uncomfortable I am. So that gives you an idea. We are fluid along each one of these lines, but there's a home base where we're the most comfortable. Okay, so hope that makes everything clear. If not, type a question up in chat and we'll get to it. All right, so here are some of the, the characteristics of each one of the styles. Amiables, amiables are people pleasers. These are, they like to work in groups. Um, they're typically, they're well balanced. They, they enjoy most things about life. They don't, they don't have too many highs. They never have too many lows. They're very sympathetic. These are, these are the people that if you're in a hospital and you want an amiable there to comfort you, because that's, that's one of their strong points. Typically, they're very diplomatic. They don't like to make waves. Um, they don't like to ruffle feathers. They will not, they're not the in your face kind of people. They love groups. They love to work in groups. They love to, they love to be a part of a group. Now, I like to be in a group if it's a working group. If it's a social group, I'm, I'm not so comfortable. So it, it's, it depends on the kind of group that you're in. Oh, by the way, where we are now is on page um, 10, sorry. So head over to page 10 and I'm gonna go through some of these. Amiables do not like conflict at all. The owner of the company I worked for, Don Walsworth Sr., was the classic amiable. When, when there was a problem in the plant, nobody wanted to go talk to him about it. But what they learned was if there was a problem, they would go to him and say, Don, we've got an issue here, but here's how we're going to solve it. What do you think? So they would come in with a, a constructive solution to a problem that they envisioned in order to minimize his stress level. So that's how that's one of the ways that you can that you can work with an amiable is if if you sense a conflict, come in with a solution. They are very slow decision makers. So if you are over on the right side, if you've identified yourself or as a as a driver or as an expressive, sometimes an amiable can be a little frustrating for you because they make decisions slowly. They have to think things over. They have to mull them over. They have to do a lot of they. They do a lot of contemplating. Analyticals, these are the facts and the data people. So amiables are people people. Analyticals are the facts and data people. Lawyers, doctors, um, uh, accountants, the people that love to work with facts and data. They're very serious as a rule. They're very purposeful. There's always a reason for why they do the things they do. Extremely self-disciplined. And the farther left you go on the analytical, on up or down on the chart, the more self-disciplined they are. They are perfectionists. The analyticals, when you come in and you have a presentation that you're going to make and you've identified somebody as an analytical, you have to make sure that all of your ducks are in a row. When we talk about how you sell to them with features and benefits and, and all that good stuff, you have to make sure that what you are talking about speaks specifically to a need that they've told you about. Otherwise, you're gonna lose them. They're neat and tidy. These are not messy people at all. So when you're presenting to them, they are, like I said, they are the facts and the data people. Remember, I told you uh, last week that we were on a road trip between Seattle and Portland. And I didn't care how we get there because you were the driver and I was the map. I had the map. Analyticals are the ones that like to go down I-5. They don't like, don't waste their time. Give them the facts and the data so that they can act on that information. But even then, they are slow decision makers because they have to absorb all of that. Mull it around in their minds. They will start taking notes. And don't be surprised if an analytical checks up on you and goes online to check the work that you did to make sure that you did it the right way. A classic analytical will do that. All right. 
drivers. These are the dynamic guys. These are the my way or the highway guys. These are the corporate CEOs, the visionaries. These are the people that draw people to them. All right. They're very purposeful. They're the visionaries. They know where they want to go. Futurists, which I never heard of until uh, about 10 years ago. I didn't know there was such a thing. But people that look down the road to see, okay, what's coming, uh, um, especially in technology. We had at Walsworth, we had a, um, a futurist who was a tech guy, and he was the best I ever saw because in 1980, I, I got my first computer in 1987. Everybody in the yearbook business was still pay, cutting and pasting everything on boards and sending them to the plant. Now, <clears throat> everything is online, everything. The companies have their own software programs to create yearbooks. In 1987, he saw where we were going to be in 2015, and he pointed our company in that direction. So that's what a driver is. They're, a driver is a visionary. They are very determined. You are not going to get in their way because they will run over you like a freight train. When you're talking with a driver, you're going to give them options. Now, when Jose is talking about making your presentation, he always pounds into you. Don't give these people more than two options because you're wasting both of your times. The drivers like options, but when you're giving a driver an option, don't give them more than two, but within, so let's say that you're planning a, a, a cruise for a, a driver. So give them two cruises, but once they've decided on which one of those cruises they want, now you can go into all the options for all the port stops that they're going to be making and what and all the, the land tours that can be done on those port stops. So that's an example of how you can take small options, just your, your main presentation, but then develop it in, into even more options. And if you want to really get on a driver's side, once you give them those options, tell them where they can go find it and let them do some research on their own because they will, and they will appreciate you doing that for them. Drivers like risks. They have no problem taking a risk. They love the, they, these are the control people. Um, very much these, these guys love the control. And they're very, and once they decide to make a decision, they go. There's no holding them back because they're processing or an analytical processes things slowly and mulls everything over. The driver will take everything in all at once, sort it out in his head, and then he'll say, okay, let's go. Or no, this doesn't make sense to me. I don't want to do this. And at that point, then you can talk about, okay, let's talk about what doesn't make sense so that we can get you to something that does make sense. All right. Everybody, everybody kind of get that. All right. So then the last one is expressives. They're very outgoing. These are the guys that drive a red Ferrari with the top down. And even if it's raining and they will take up two places They'll take up two parking spots so nobody can scratch their car. They want to be noticed. They want to, when, when they walk into the, when they walk in a room, they want people to know who they are. They're ambitious. Sound like anybody you know? Outgoing sound like anybody you know? They're very ambitious. They, they want, they want to rule the world. They're very charismatic. They draw people into themselves. Um, those of you, I don't know if David McCovey is an expressive, but he is a very charismatic guy. Um, and I can see why evolution is such a, a powerful force in the travel industry, because he has the ability to draw people to him. And that's a really good trait. They're very persuasive. Anybody at Archer Travel, you know about that? Anybody at Evolution Travel, you know who's that? They're not very time disciplined. That's kind of, that can be an issue. So you can't, what, I made the mistake when I was very young in my sales career, when I was selling apartment supplies, I would go in and sit down and talk with apartment managers. And I spend the first half hour talking and swapping stories and I never sold anything. And once I got beyond about 15 minutes, I realized, well, this is stupid. I'm not getting paid to sit here and tell stories and drink coffee. I'm getting paid here to sell them something. So because I was a commission sales rep, I needed to make money. 
not sit there and because that extra 15 minutes was a sales call I didn't get to make down the road. So you have to, when you're working with expressives, you have to understand that they are, they are not very time disciplined. They'll sit there and talk with you till the cows come home. They love the recognition. That's what I told you before. And they are fast decision makers. Now, one thing that's not on here that I'm, I'm going to have to change, but these, an expressive is a global thinker. We're an analytical is a facts and data person. An expressive is a global thinker. So when you're making a presentation that you've identified to an expressive personality, don't bog them down in details like COVID shots and travel insurance and all of that stuff. Tell them how much fun they're going to have on the trip. Show them where the stuff that they're going to go. Talk in generalities. Talk as a global overall picture. Once you get them to agree that they want to do business with you and they've signed the credit card form and, and all the th stuff that you need to have, then you go in and do what those of you that have been in sales, it's post-selling. This is what you do after you've got them on the dotted line because now you've got to get their, their visa information, their passport information, their health, their health history, all of that stuff you have to get but you don't do that during your sales presentation, especially with an expressive. You do it after you've got them on the dotted line. So because they will make a fast decision and then you can go through all the minutia of what it takes to make that trip actually happen. Okay. So I want to spend some time here on what's called style toxicities. And because this shows up on the test, and, and I would say less than half the people get this right. What is for me, because I am, because I am enabled with driving tendencies, what I am comfortable with sometimes makes me uncomfortable when I'm talking with a driver. All right, because, because I am a less assertive, more emotional guy. I'm going to have issues with a more assertive, less emotional guy. Right? So you see how that works? So if you're down here in the extremes, that's one thing. But if you're here in the margins, actually, if you're down here in the, the more extreme you are, the more problems you're going to have. So an expressive, because they are way on the assertive side and way on the, and way on the, uh, uh, on the emotional side, the, the, the farther you get into your own home-based style, the more issues you're going to have with the opposite style. So analyticals and expressives, drivers and amiables. I can, I can sell to a driver. I had no problem selling to drivers because I was kind of one. Um, where I had some issues, basically, where I had some issues was because I was kind of a detail guy. I had, to, I had to change what I was doing when I was selling to an expressive so I didn't start telling stories, all right? So in our family, I'm gonna give away the story here. In our family, Steve is an analytical. Ron is an expressive. I'm an amiable. My sister Sandy, the fourth member of the Archers, is, she's like a lot like I am. She's an amiable as well. But I just want you to pay attention to sometimes when you have an issue, you're running into this style toxicities. So it doesn't happen often, but if it does, um, you, can, you can pay attention to it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some clues. These are some clues that you can look for to help you identify somebody's, so what somebody's style is. I'm not going to go through all of these, but it's on page 11. Oh, by the way, on page 10, this personality test, this, this styles chart that we're working from was the very first one ever developed back in the 70s. And right now, and you've probably all taken a, a personality style test of some sort down the road. Myers-Briggs has one that had some really weird ones like phlegmatic and sanguine and there's another one that was concrete, sequential, and I didn't get any of those terms. Amiable driver, expressive, and um, uh, amiable driver, expressor, and analytical. I understand what those words mean. I'm old school. 
I understand those words. So the, the but the course that, that we taught at Sales Training Institute was this, based on the website that's done, there's two websites on page 10 that this is taken from. So if you wanna get into the weeds on personality styles, I would advise you to go to these websites because there's some really cool stuff in there that'll really help you down the road. So here's some of the characteristics on the verbal. Um, you can see the voice, amiables are softer, slower, their diction is more formal. The voice on an expressive, it's louder and faster as you would expect. Now the nonverbal clues, I want you to I, I want you to circle a couple of these because these are the ones that are the most obvious. All right. Handshakes. I want you to circle handshake. I want you to circle facial expression. I want you to circle eye contact. And I want you to circle gestures. All right. Those are the ones that they give you immediately. Shaking hands, you can identify somebody's style pretty quickly. Now, the key to, the key to identifying styles is not to get, try to get them into a quadrant, but you can get them into a half pretty quickly. You can get them into either more assertive or less assertive, or you can get them into more emotional or less emotional. Probably within the first 20 to 30 seconds, you can identify one or the other of their main characteristics. So then once you do that, then you can start gathering all the other information that helps you put them into um, what their home based style where they like to be treated. Handshake on an amiable. A handshake on an amiable is firm and it's under, okay? An amiable, when, handshakes are really cool. Um, you can tell a lot by a handshake. If somebody comes in, so this is the neutral, let me back up a little bit. So the neutral handshake is thumb up, fingers pointed directly at somebody. And when you grip their hands, you go web to web and grip firmly. All right. Have you ever shaken somebody's hand? They grab you out here. That's that's a killer. Or have you ever shaken hands with somebody and there's just no pressure there? It's like, oh man, it's like, you know, you know wet fish. Handshakes are, are really, they're fun. They're fun. Somebody comes in, anything from neutral to under, what are they telling you? I'm yours. Use me and abuse me. I'm submissive. Oops, under. Sorry, under. I Use me. I, I am, I, I'm a submissive type. So that tells you that, that you're going to have to take a little bit more control. You ever shaking hands with somebody that comes in over the top? That's somebody that says, I'm in control here. I got everything. Everything's cool. You, let, you just let me do everything and everything's ready to go. I, I made the mistake one time of shaking hands with the school principal. And he came in, he came in like this. And I grabbed his hand and I immediately did this. And he no sooner got to there than he immediately, he immediately Turn me back over like this. So that told me, I mean, I did it just as an experiment, but it didn't it didn't start the conversation off very well. And I had to do, I had to do some fast backtracking. So just shake hands the way they like to, they like to be shaken, they like hands to be shaken. And amiable, the classic amiables, they'll come in and they'll put their hand, they'll put their hand on top of yours. That's the classic amiable handshake. So um, facial expression. Do you have somebody who's, there's no, there's no expression there. Um, eye contact, uh, strong eye contact is assertive. Not so strong eye contact is, is non-assertive. Gesturing is an emotional trait. Generally, the general idea is where are, where are they gesturing? Now, because I'm sitting at a desk, Typically, I'm in here because I've got a, a small a small picture window. But when I'm teaching, when I was at my schools or when I was in a lecture class, I was up and down the dais. My gesturing was all out here. So it's either outside the shoulders as a rule or inside the shoulders. Outside emotions, inside keeping the emotions in check. And you can read, you can read all about all of these. So... Um, but this, uh, these are really good guidelines. Now, remember, these are not absolutes. 
All right, you need to understand these are not absolutes, but these are a general guideline of um, what to look for, especially when you're meeting somebody for the first time. It's simply all it is is a matter of being observant. And um, I would I would take some time to to study these. Okay, so what what I want you to do, oh boy, we really went over today. Sorry guys. Um, what I want you to do is some homework. I want you to do this, uh, have some fun with this. Do this, do this on somebody that you're gonna go sell to. Do this on maybe a boss, your spouse, your kids. And it probably you probably already have a good idea of where they fall in here, but this will just this will just solidify it. The other thing, and now next week. Now that we've identified what the styles are for this week, next week we're going to go in and show you how to use those styles for the benefit of the sale. Um, also, remember, I mean, you're always selling yourself anyway. Like I said, this is a life skill. So if you're in a tense situation at home, you're in a tense situation at work, next week we're going to give you the tools to help defuse those situations. So that's it for today. Um, Amanda, does anybody have any questions? Um, I don't see any questions at the moment. Just okay. uh, that is very interesting. I had no idea about the handshake, so there's a lot. Um, where can we find this page? I linked it to you below in chat. If you guys have, uh, you guys want to see the PowerPoints, you're missing the videos, and you're having trouble finding them, Mike can send you a link to them. Just email him at mike at archertravel.com, and I'll happily help you with that. Also, um, it's easy to find. Just go to your back office, click on the Travel Cafe, go to the Trainings tab, and then you'll see Mike Archer's sales training, and it'll be right there. All right, cool. And the link, um, the videos, my PowerPoints and Jose's PowerPoints are together. But the issue, and, uh, but I want to caution you, I'm happy to send you the PowerPoints for both of us, but my PowerPoint, the PowerPoints don't work unless you're watching the videos. So, um, but you're happy, I'm happy to have you to give you those PowerPoints if you want them. Okay, anything else? Uh, no, I think that's it, Mike. Thank you so much. And next week, we'll see you at the same time, 11 a.m. Pacific time for number three, lesson three. Lesson number three. And if you guys want to get a jump start on anything, you can go ahead and start looking at the manual and taking a look at stuff. And then if you have any questions, just write them down and we can talk about them next week. Oh, so, also, if you had questions, sorry, I wanted to say this on your columns and adding them and minusing them together. I saw someone got a zero there as their second one. Yeah, you can't have a zero. There's there's 15 lines there. So so at some point you you check both either you you check um you check the, both lines on on one side. So just recheck your math and re just re yeah either just recheck your math or go see if you put um, a check mark on each line on the same line and then um, you got to get rid of one of them. Yeah. You cannot have a zero. If you have a zero, you're not in a style. Yeah, that's what I was thinking because I, I looked at the style for her and she was zero, so she would have been split. But you're saying there can't be a zero, so just recheck that. Yeah, just recheck your math. And by the way, if, you, if you're still not clear about this, scan, um, scan or take a picture of what you did and send it to me, um, mike at archertravel.com, and I'll take a look at it with you and send you back some notes and um and some things that you can do to make sure you're in the right. And next week, we're going to verify that you're actually in your right style because there's a couple of things we do that says, yep, uh, that's my style and I'm, I'm locked in. And so, what was your phone number, Mike, again? 206-979-4249. Perfect. Okay. Okay, guys. See you next week. Bye.